Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace to you on this day. I'm so glad that you are here and joining us for worship. That's it's a great thing. This morning, I found myself earlier, and I shared this with the, the folks at the 9 o'clock service, I found myself looking at the picture of Jesus above the cross. And then I found myself looking at the two big picture windows in particular. And I got to thinking about this. I don't know why it struck me, but it did. That, that um, as near as I can tell, all of these windows were put in when the church was built. You know, like a thousand years ago or whenever it was. 170 years ago, give or take. And when you think about that, um, as you look at the pictures, notice who is in them and where they are. Um, because back in Jesus' day, women and children would not have been anywhere near the front. It would have been all men. Because, and even in the temple, uh, if that's where that one is, um, women were not allowed in the inner sanctum of the temple. So why are our pictures this way? And I think part of the answer is, is because the stained glass artists and the culture of the time wanted to convey a different message about who the gospel was for. The gospel being for everybody. You know, fast forward to today, no matter who you are, where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. So that, that the stained glass artists, through their artistry, through their art, had the power to impact the future generations who would see these stained glass windows to talk about a particular message of who the faith is for. I just share that with you to reflect on this idea that each of us has the power to share our faith in ways that we may not be totally in tune with or even aware of, but that we have a power in what we say and what we do to let people know who is welcome, who is uh, welcome at the table, and who is part of the faith. Uh, has nothing to do with announcements, but uh, just wanted to, to get you thinking about that. We thank God for all of our ministry volunteers, all of our musicians and our tech team and our people who put the service together and keep the lights on so that we can worship in this lovely space today. The flowers are placed to the glory of God in memory of loved ones by Larry and Ann Walter and in memory of Maynard Fry's birthday by Randy and Sharon Wilson. I'd like to invite anyone who has announcements, I know Jonathan's got some, uh, to come forward and to uh, share their announcements. And it's a race to see who can get there first. Is it turned on? Let's try that. Good morning, everyone. That's better. Okay. Um, I'm just here to tell you that Golden Age Sunday is coming up in a few weeks. It's on October 23rd, and I would like to gather all the Golden Agers together to sing with the choir that Sunday for a special anthem. So we will have a, an extra rehearsal for this one, so you don't have to come out at night at the regular choir rehearsal. So we're going to rehearse on October 19th. It's a Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock for that Sunday. So I just want to invite everybody to come out. If you want to come and sing, please just contact me, and we would love to have you join us. Thank you. morning. Um, so I, I'm in, just here to remind you about uh, the youth breakfast next Sunday um, from 8.30 to 10.30 down in Fraunfelder Hall. Um, it's $10 for adults and $5 for children 10 and under. Um, it is a buffet-style breakfast uh, prepared by, by Al and his crew, so um, tickets will be for sale in the gallery after worship. They will also be available at the door, um, so hope to see you there. Um, I'm also here to invite you to join me in representing St. John's in the Nazareth Halloween Parade this year. Um, the parade is on October 15th 
Uh, it starts at 1 o'clock. It is rain or shine, so there is no rain date. Um, there is absolutely no cost for any group to join. Um, so the parade is going to begin at Belvedere and Liberty Street. We will travel west on Belvedere to Main Street, north on Main Street to the Circle, and then east on Center Street, ending at the high school. Um, anyone that participates will receive hot dogs and soda after the parade. Um, and so if you're interested, I'll be in the gallery after worship. Um, the deadline to sign up is October 10th, which is next Monday. So if you're interested, please get in contact with me by next Sunday the 9th. Um, and once we have a group together, we can talk about a theme. Um, Jeff and I were talking, and we think it'd be really cool if we all shaved our heads and, and dressed as Pastor Jeff for the Halloween parade. Um, in any event, if you're interested, uh, please see me after worship. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, I'm Jeff Thorne, representing the uh, Partnership Committee. This coming summer, we will be going over to Germany as uh, being hosted by our uh, Partnership Church in Melzingen. But it's, if, if you're interested at all in going, now is the time to start planning. Um, it has to do with, um, we, we will stay at, at their houses, be fed by them, um, and they will work up a pretty good program for us for, for the entire week. So, but talk to the Krugs, talk to Jay Benfield, talk to me and my wife, uh, talk to the Dawes. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else has been to Germany that I, I'm looking around the, um, the congregation. But, uh, oh, yeah, Laura Lee, uh, William, William's not here today, but uh, but talk to some of the people that have been involved with it and uh, get, get an opinion. Uh, it's, it's well worth the trip. Thanks. I, too, have a couple of announcements. I'm going to follow up with Donna for Golden Age. It is October 23rd, celebrated at the second service, this service. And if you would like to attend the luncheon, which is directly after the service, there's a sign-up sheet out in the gallery. You can sign up. Golden Agers are um, pretty much the only people that we're going to feed for free. But if you would like to attend, we would love to have you there. Uh, we will be doing donations um, around the table as we sit and eat. And if you'd like to make a sponsorship, feel free to sponsor someone who is a Golden Ager or in memory of someone who's a Golden Ager. Uh, this will help to defray the cost as well. So we invite you to come out and celebrate with us on October 23rd for Golden Age Sunday. The second announcement I have is for the 2023 calendar project. We, for those of you that have participated in the past, I have the sheets here with me. If you'd like to come and take a look at them, you can see whether or not everything is current, and uh, we'll go from there. And for those folks that are not here, we'll be calling people to see if you still want to participate. We'd love to have you participate in the calendar and remember the, your loved ones, your family, and your friends. So let's see. The next. Thing we get to do you participate in isn't that great it's our greeting time so we are now inviting you to greet one another and consider sharing this question when do you feel most powerful
Okay. We're having a good time. <clears throat> All right, we're going to ask you to please be seated, and we'll begin with gathering and worship. Please join me in the bold and underlined words. God be with you, and also with you. Let us invite God's presence. Eternal God, companion of all who seek you, and seeker of all who turn away from you, draw near to us that we may draw near to you, and grant us the grace to love and to serve that we may find in your will our true freedom. Through Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. scripture reading this morning is Psalm 37, verses 1 through 9. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. 
it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Our second reading this morning is from 2 Timothy um, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Please join me in the bold and underlined words. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Louise, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here ends the reading of the word. If there are any children who'd like to come up for children's time, now would be the time. Any takers? Do I have to? Really? Thank you. Yes, no, maybe. Not going to happen, huh? Okay. All right, so then maybe you can participate from where you're sitting. I'll try to look at you. So here's the question up here by your lonely self. Have you ever built a campfire? You have. Have you ever built a campfire? You have not. Have you ever built a campfire? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe. What do we need to build a campfire? What do we need? Sticks. We need anything besides sticks. Logs? Sticks and logs. Anything else? What? Matches. All right, well, I've got us covered. I have the match. Okay. Are you good at building fires? Maybe. Are you good at building fires? No, I don't know. How about you guys? Are you good at building fires? Don't know. Hmm. It takes a fire, it takes a lot to keep a fire going. Now, the reason I'm asking about all of this is because in what we just read in the Bible, Paul says to someone, 
you need to make sure the fire doesn't go out in your life. Meaning that what we believe about Jesus is kind of like a fire that we have to keep going so that other people can hear about Jesus from us. So the next time you guys are at a campfire, in addition to building, you know, roasting marshmallows or cooking hot dogs or all that other fun stuff, maybe you can remember that Jesus wants us to be like the light of a fire to other people. Thank you, Mr. Brave, sir, for coming up. You can go back to your seat. And I think we're going to sing. Please pray with me. Thank you for gathering us, Lord, to hear your word. Even more to be filled with your presence, to be touched by your spirit. To glimpse within ourselves and each other the power of your love. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it's definitely days like today that 
make me think of campfires and warmth and building a campfire. Lisa and I sold our camper in the summer of 2019. Um, and one of the things I missed most about camping was uh, we used to cook dinner fairly frequently over the campfire. Now, we have a fire pit in our backyard, but it's too big for the grate that we use to cook food on. So that's a part that I miss about camping is that going out and cooking dinner. But what I don't miss about that is those days when the menu called for dinner being cooked over the campfire and God had the audacity to let it rain or to be misty or even to snow and then Jeff in all of his limited fire building skills had really tough time getting the campfire going. So what I want to know is how many of you have managed to light a fire in the middle of a rainstorm? How many of you have lit a fire in a snowstorm? How many of you have sat around a fire in the rain? A few people? Okay. How many of you have ever tended a campfire? All right. How many of you have kept that campfire going more than one day? How many of you have kept your campfire going more than a week? I'm not so sure I could keep it going for a week. I've, during the day, I've kind of let it burn down so there are embers just under the, the ashes. You know what that looks like. And then if you put some wood on it and fan it, you can get it to be a flame again, which is kind of the image that's used in our scripture lesson where uh, in the New Revised Standard Version, uh, the author is telling Timothy to rekindle the flame that is within you. The New International Version says to fan the faith within you into a flame again. So this idea of, of faith as a fire. So think about the way that you became a Christian. For many of us, the way we became a Christian was we grew up in a Christian family. How many of us grew up in a Christian family? safe to say the majority of us here then is how we came to faith was we kind of learned it from our parents or our grandparents or our relatives kind of like Timothy in the scriptures I recall the faith of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and their faith and I'm sure that that faith resides in you so in some ways we've inherited the faith and if that's the case, if you've grown up in a Christian family and didn't come to the faith through a conversion experience or through a life event that really opened you to the presence of Jesus and the power of Jesus in your life, chances are that the faith that you've grown into is something gradual and is something that it's almost you learn more about it, you explore it, maybe it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, or maybe it's like, like you learn a little bit more each time rather than this experience that's all consuming. And yet this image that, that the author uh, lifts up for us in this letter of encouragement to Timothy is faith as a fire. Think about what's going on in a fire. Energy is produced. Heat is produced. Light is produced. When I think of a fire in terms of our personal selves, you know, what sets you on fire? We say, what are you passionate about? What drives you? What energy really gives you, you know, uh, this get up and go to engage the world? What, what is it that gets you up every morning and you keep pushing? What energy is behind that? Is it your faith? Do you think of your faith as a fire? Or do you think of your faith as something else? In this letter, the, the, the encouragement is to not let the fire go out. The author's afraid that Timothy is going to give up because of the shame that was attached to Christian leaders, to Paul and others being imprisoned, that being a Christian equaled criminal. 
and because of the suffering that, con that, that, that uh, often went along with being a Christian. And so this is encouragement not to give up the faith, to keep it going. Going back to the family image, though, and, and um, uh, Eugene Boring and Fred Craddock mentioned this in their commentary on this passage. The faith that we have is not just for us. The faith that you and I have is not just to help us get through. But our responsibility is to pass it on to the next generation, to keep the fire going. And not only that, but to keep the fire going as a congregation to light the way for the world. This is encouragement not to give up with a reminder that we are not given a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power. And so as I read this passage and as I think about it, what I invite you to reflect on is where do you feel powerful in your faith? Where would you liken your faith to a fire? Or do you even have to do some work to get to that image? Do you feel like your faith is compelling you to go out into the world to make a difference, to change things, to light the way, to be a beacon? Or, or is your faith something else? Is it more the ember variety than the fire variety? Each one of us has to answer that question for ourselves, but our power comes from the Lord our power to go out to the world. What lights the fire is the, the, the gift of Jesus Christ in our lives and it's, that's what's supposed to send us out there with passion. And that if we have lost our passion, what can we do to encourage each other and remind each other about this power that's available to us? That's this advice that this author is giving to Timothy. Don't lose the fire. Don't let it go out in the first place. And so one of the things that happens, I think, for each of us is how do we encourage each other? That's what I think we need to sit about, or think about the next time we find ourselves sitting around the fire and warming our hands. Amen. Okay, so... Having said that, I invite us to stand in body or in spirit and say what we believe about our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. On a regular Sunday, we would have had our time of offering first. Um, and you could have handed me your prayer cards. If you have them uh, today, you can put them in the offering plate, or if you want, you can also uh, text me any prayer requests you might have at that phone number. We have a lot of prayer requests today. We've had requests for Bobby and Alicia and Judy, for Jake S. and Marie C., for Chris K., for Mary Maddie, Craig, Arden, Amanda, Sean, Brenda, the people of Ukraine, Vienna, Donald, Jeff T, Joey B, Bill S, Lauren, Baby Colson, Judy L, Lori D, Bernie, Rosie M, 
Kim S., Judy B., Sandy B., Sally and Nick, Randy W., Christopher C., Sean, Karen, Ryan K., Beth F., Nancy, Doris, Chris R., Marion H. We've received prayer requests for families and individuals in a time of bereavement for the family of Marilyn Snugs, for Catherine and the loss of her husband, for Forrest Terry, for the family of Gloria Getz. We have received prayer requests for those who are in the military, for Terry Brown, who's serving a six-month deployment, and for Bobby Z. Let us join our hearts and minds in a time of prayer. So many names, gracious God, so many requests, so many we call your attention to. We know that your hands and your arms are big enough to hold us all. As we come to you this day with these souls and dear ones on our hearts and on our minds, we ask for your healing, for your guidance, for your compassion, for your mercy, for your direction, for your forgiveness, for your peace. We ask you today to stir us up, to help us to reclaim or to find the fire of your spirit within us, that passion that drives us into the world on fire with your love, on fire with your justice, on fire with your compassion, with that passion that drives us into the world to make a difference so that people might know how much they are loved, how much they matter, how much you care. Hear the prayers of our hearts and our minds, for we lift them to you in Jesus' name. And hear us as we join in a prayer of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sisters and brothers, in the words of the psalmist, let us ask for the forgiveness we need. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit. And hear us as we pray together the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to that time in our worship when we glorify God with sharing our talents, our lives, our energy, our passion, when we share our finances for the ministries of the church, and when we share our joy at being in the presence of each other. So I invite us now to bring our lives and our gifts to God. can silence every fear there's a love that embraces the heartache the pain and the tears through my 
my faith and my doubting, I know one thing for sure. His word is unfailing, his promise secure. Todo be a stabian, everything will be all right. The whole world's in his hands, your whole world's in his hands. In the darkness and the trials, he's faithful and he is true. The whole world's in his hands. You told of his stabian. Oh, everything will be all right. Oh, Father, you said everything is going to be all right. But my circumstances say I won't last through the night. I need your word to hold me now. I need you to pull me through. I need a miracle, a breakthrough. I need you. Say you hold the whole universe in your hand. But my world's falling apart like it was made of sand. Am I small enough to slip through the cracks? Can you take my broken pieces and put them back? Give me faith to believe you are on my side. Open my eyes to see you working in my life. Let the past remind me you never fail. And tell my soul it is well, yeah. Todo vista bien. Everything will be all right. The whole world's in his hands. The whole world's in his hands. In the darkness and the trials, he's faithful and he is true. The whole world's in his hands. You told him he is still bien. Oh, everything will be all right. Oh, told him us to start bien. Oh. Everything will be all right. Oh, oh, oh. Todo va a bien. Everything will be all right. The whole world's in his hands. Your whole world's in his hands. In the darkness and the trials, he's faithful and he is true. The whole world's in his hands. You told him I'll stop in. Oh, everything will be all right. Oh, told him I'll stop in. Oh, everything will be all right. Oh. got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole world in his hands he's got the whole wide world in his hands to do mundo en semana está to do mundo de esta mesta to do mundo en semana está está Our Lord invites us to this table. He is the host and we are the guests. This meal is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving bread. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Eternal God, who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. 
We thank you for making us in your own image and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death, we celebrate Christ's resurrection, and in the beloved community of your church, we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise for women and men of faith in every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice. With all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify you. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be opened and that we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. In the night that he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, he blessed it and broke it, and he said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this remembering me. And after the bread, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant poured out of my blood for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, you proclaim my death until I come again the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is now ready.
On this worldwide communion Sunday, this is the body of Christ. Take and eat. This is the cup of salvation. Take and drink. You may be seated. Let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving. Eternal God, you have called your people from east and west and north and south to feast at the table of Jesus Christ. We thank you for Christ's presence and for the spiritual food of Christ's body and blood. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful to your will. Go with us to the streets, to our homes, and to our places of labor and leisure, that whether we are gathered or scattered, we may be the servant church of the servant Christ, in whose name we rejoice to pray. Amen.
As we go from this place today, my hope is that the people who encounter us might describe us as being passionate, might describe us as being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in joy and share your light. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.